Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, The Knitting PT. I am Andrea, your host. Uh, I am an orthopedic physical therapist by day and a knitter and mom 24-7. <laughs> uh, so if you don't know me on Instagram, I put out reels every Friday with maker self-care content. Um, so feel free to check those out. I try to update them as well on my YouTube. And as I say this, I realize that I have not updated the reels onto my YouTube for a few weeks now. Um, so I will be doing that soon. Um, yeah, I don't know why it takes me so long to do it, but it just somehow does. Um, anyway, but this is my podcast or vlog where I talk about all things yarn related and projects and knitting and a little bit of wellness tip in each episode too. So thank you for joining me. Uh, so this week I've got a ton of things to show you. But let's just say that my mental headspace was not great the past two weeks and so I did a lot of retail therapy in the form of yarn shopping. So anyway, I have a lot of things to show you. I have some whips. I don't have any FOs, but I think I did make a decent amount of progress on my whips. So let's get to it. So first, um, I did finish the first sleeve on my husband's Rift sweater. So here's the first sleeve. This pattern, if you don't know, is knit from the bottom up and then it has satin sleeves that you knit from cuff up and then you seam them in. Um, so I did finish the first sleeve. I did not block it. I decided actually belatedly to block them together so I can make sure they're the same length. Um, yeah, so here's the first sleeve. And then I did already start the second sleeve. And here it is. So the yarn for this, the black is called Black Pearl and it's from Dream and Classy a dream in color on their classy worsted base. And the contrast here is Lovebirds, and that is from Forest Fiber Arts, Forest Fiber Art Friends, Forest Fiber Arts um, on their worsted base also. Um, so I've actually set myself a goal of like working one increase per day, just so that, you know, I slowly make progress on it. And I think that way I should get this finished hopefully by the end of the month. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty happy about that. It will be so nice to have this project off my needles. It's been on my needles since I think February. Uh, let's see. Okay, so my other, so I, I have five whips total, but I'm only actively working on three of them right now. So I'm only gonna show you those three. Um, so my second whip is a test knit and it's for Rachel Kurihara. Uh, she's Rachel Knits Things on Instagram. She's an excellent designer. I really love her designs. This is my second time test knitting for her. I test knitted her in my pocket sweater, which is a toddler sized um, sweater. And I've actually done it, tw I knit it twice already. I knit the first time for my son, who was two. And then the second time I knit a vest version, just without sleeves, for my daughter, who is five. And so I'm test knitting the Amara sweater right now. So it's knit bottom up. You can see the back has this beautiful split hem on the back. And you can see there's lots of cables. There's some bobbles here and brioche on the sides of the body. Yeah, um, I really, I really like it. I've been really enjoying it. And the cables actually haven't been that hard to figure out. I'm not, cables take me a while, but I feel like I'm getting the hang of these and they're, um, the charts are easy to read. Um, I love the way that Rachel has you knit the bobbles. I'm not going to tell you how it's done because it's part of her pattern, but it's one of the first times I've knit bobbles and felt like there wasn't that huge like gaping hole, you know? You know, sometimes when you knit bobbles, there's like a hole behind the bobble, but the way she has you finish up the bobble totally cinches that up. So there really isn't, there's still a little bit here that might be just me, but it's really, it, it just, it looks so nice. So yeah, I'll give you another look at that. Yeah, so right now, um, you start bottom up and you split for front and back. So I am right now, I just last night bound off the front of the neck here, and then now it's onto the shoulders a little bit, and then I'll start on the back. So this is kind of how it'll sit. Yeah, and then you um, pick up for sleeves. And the sleeves are all brioche. Um, but these, this yarn is by Jador Fibers. She's a new indie dyer. Um, this is her colorway one of a kind boho teal in her DK base. I really love it. Yeah, and I think this um, colorway is great because it has the, a little bit of like variegation within the color itself. So it's not completely solid in one tone. It's definitely got depth to it, but it's not so much that it takes away from the pattern that much. 
which, you know, when you have a heavily patterned pattern, you don't want something super varied because then you'll lose how the pattern looks itself. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited about this one. I've been working on it almost every night. Um, yeah. I'm really happy with how it's going, though. Um, I'm really excited to see it finished and to be able to wear it, too. Uh, what else? I feel like there was something else I wanted to say about it. But now I don't remember. Yeah. Anyway, I really love it. So that's that. And then I have had a new cast on since, and that is my Earth and Air sweater. So the Earth and Air sweater is a pattern by James Watts. Um, it came out last year, and um, it's a brioche top. But what's unique about it is that he has you hold um, one of it's a two color brioche top and one color is in worsted weight and the second color is it's written for a lace weight mohair um so that you have that contrast between the yarn weights and also that fuzziness in the mohair as you all probably know i am allergic to mohair and surrey like they're both super itchy to me and scratchy um and so i can't do that so i am substituting in this pattern with a just like a fingering weight yarn so this is part of my uh, Monet Impressionisms Club capsule collection. Uh, so this is September sweater. So I realized that um, September's yarn came in and I cast it on immediately. I will pop a picture here of what it looks like in its skein form. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, I also put a picture of the painting that it is um, based off of that Kelly dyed it up on. And the painting is called the Rose Walk Gaverni. I think it's so beautiful the way it translated to yarn and the way she dyed it up. Um, and I'll show you how it looks in the cake. And oh, it looks just like the painting, doesn't it? It's like the, all this riot of beautiful, warm, autumnal colors. Yeah, I really love it so much. And um, I'm really feeling the fall vibes as I work on this. So are you ready? Uh, so this is what I've got so far. It is also knit from the bottom up. So I realized you probably can't see it that well, but I will try to hold it closer. So the gauge on this is quite loose with the idea that you can see it between. So there we go, that's a pretty good shot. Yeah. So I'm really happy with how it turns out. Like so far the worsted, that solid color is really just kind of toning down the craziness a little bit of the Monet yarn. Let me see if I have, I think if I hold this against some, with something white behind it, then you'll be able to see it better. This isn't white, but maybe it'll do. No. Here we go. Okay. I think you'll be able to see it better as I get more of it done. I'm only a few inches in on the body so far. Um, the nice thing about brioche too is that it's also reversible. So let me show you what the other side looks like. Yeah, so you can see. So if I stretch it out, so it looks the way it should. I did make a mistake on the brioche on one row. I, instead of purling, I knitted. And so there's one row where the stitches just look a little off. I don't think you can notice that. I don't think you can see it and that it's that obvious. It's just really obvious to me. But yeah, look at that. But yeah, I really, I really like how it's turning out. Um, it'll be a perfect kind of fall, fall colored sweater that's both playful and colorful without being like overwhelming. Um, yeah, and also the um, the contrast I'm using for this, this is Knitting for Olive in the Heavy Merino Base, which is worsted. It's this pretty burgundy color. The colorway is Bordeaux. Yeah, and Knitting for Olive, this is actually my first time knitting with Knitting for Olive. It's a pretty good, like um, a little bit more cost affordable option to go with. And I quite like their range of colors too. Um, yeah. And also bonus, it does come up like, an, it does come in a cake, so it's like less yarn to wind. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it's going so far. Hopefully I'll have more to show you next time. Oh, and I wanna show you this too. So this stitch marker is by Gabriella of Hello Gabriella. This is, I joined her Patreon for the neighborhood tier, which is the only tier she has open right now where you get a stitch marker a month, along with some artwork, uh, digital artwork that she makes. But this was October, I think, October stitch marker. 
is so autumnal. It goes perfectly with my Earth and Air autumnal sweater. Yeah, and this is a polymer clay stitch marker. But yeah, I love it. Um, so that is it for all my whips. I am kind of just rotating between all of them throughout the day. Uh, my kids have been homesick for the past week and a half almost. Like my son's been home since last Monday. So I've gotten a lot of knitting time because he's been very clingy and needing me to sit with him a lot. Um, and so I've been doing a lot of knitting when I'm sitting there as much as I can. Um, so I feel like I've knit a lot and made a good amount of progress on everything. And so hopefully when I record again in two weeks, I'll have something finished hopefully to show you. I think my Amara might be finished by then. Um, fingers crossed because I have some other test knits that I just signed up for that I do need to get going on to once uh, the pattern comes out. But yeah, um, so let's move on to, oh, before we move on, now I remember what I was going to say. I was going to tell you about what I'm wearing. So this is my little bird sweater or tee. Um, it's by Vera Makal Makavali. I don't know how to say her name, but it's by Vera. She partners a lot with Hohilo Cotelli um, for the interpretations books that they come out with every year. Um, I think, was this one part of an interpretations book? I don't remember, but the pattern's called Little Bird. It's actually written to be a full-length sweater. Uh, I modified it based on some modifications I saw on Ravelry where someone else did something similar. Um, so I just made it a T, and then actually I think when I knit it, I didn't swatch. And so my it, each of the stockinette portions between the lace is supposed to be like an inch. Mine are more like an inch and a half because I didn't swatch. Um, and so it turned out super long, even though I knit it exactly to pattern. So you can see, I'll stand up here. It goes down to way, well, it goes down and it, can, it covers my butt. Like it covers my butt, but I kind of love it. I, I like that it's kind of tunic-y. Um, I will say if for your proportions, if your hips are wider than your waist, you definitely want to maybe consider adding some increases to make it A-line if you are looking to make a tunicky kind of top because it is straight all the way down. And I'm lucky that my hips aren't too much bigger than my waist. So it's not that big of a problem for me, but yeah, you can see. But yeah, I, can, I really love it. All these beautiful lace details in between. Yeah, and I knit mine in Madeline Tosh Prairie, which is their lace weight yarn, which I think might be discontinued now. I don't remember. I think I saw something about it. Um, but it's on, knit on US 2 needles and zero for the ribbing. So it took me quite a while. It's quite a slog. And after I was done, I thought I'm never knitting something on U another garment on US 2 needles again. And I haven't since, so we'll see if that holds up. But now, you know, whenever I find a fingering white sweater on in it, I very carefully look at the needle sizes needed because I did not realize you needed size zero needles to knit the ribbing. Um, and if I'd known that, I probably might not have knit it, which would have been tragic because I do love this one so much, but it's good enough for me just to have the one. But yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. Okay, so on to stash acquisitions. So, um, the, I got a couple orders in. One of them was a huge order I placed with Shop La Mercerie on uh, the day when all my work stuff started happening and I decided splurge to make myself feel better. And then in the end, I was really glad I did because I continued, you know, to be in a bad headspace for about a week and my order arrived and it cheered me up. So one of the things I got um, was the Knitting for Olive Merino that I showed you, the Bordeaux colorway that I'm using my Earth and Air. The second one I got is the Gilliatt yarn. It's 100% wool. This is in worsted weight as well. And the colorway is Tempet. So it's this deep, dark blue. It's not quite navy. It's like a dark sooty kind of blue. It's got some gray tones in there too. Yeah, I'd actually gotten this to potentially pair with the September yarn, not knowing how well either option would work. And when it showed up, um, it clearly worked with the, the Bordeaux yarn much better. So this, I just have two balls of this in my stash and it'll be used for something. Um, along at Shop La Mercerie, I also got picked up two skeins of Woolberry. This is in the non-superwash merino base and this is a natural worsted. And I was just curious to try Bethany's um, non-superwash base. So this is in Peachy Keen. 
And now I'm like regretting a little bit not getting some of this in her, because Peachy Keen I think was part of the road trip collection this year. And I now regret not getting any of it in that collection because I really love this colorway now in person. Like now that I see it, I'm like, oh my goodness, it's beautiful. It's such a pale peachy color. I really, really love it. Yeah, super love it. Yeah. Um, in that order, I also got some Kinetic Knitter. So this is my first time getting the Kinetic Knitter. This is in the Twisted Sock Base, 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon. This is um, Honey Bear. So it's pretty, I mean, it's honey. <laughs> this also very autumnally. And I got um, three, skein yeah, three skeins of this so it could do a fingering weight sweater. Yeah. I'd actually gotten this to potentially do for a test knit I applied for, not realizing when I applied and when I bought the yarn at the time that the test knit is in DK weight. I thought it was fingering, um, but it's fine. I will always have a use for fingering weight for garments down here in Texas. Um, another order I got in was the October Collective. Was it October or maybe September? September, yeah. September Collective um, colorways for Woolberry. So I, of course, could not resist both colorways. And so I got one skein of Berry Merino. This is fingering weight on crunchy leaves. And it looks very similar to Honey Bear, but if I hold them together, you'll see there's some differences. Um, like this Woolberry crunchy leaves is just, it has a darker hue to it a little bit and richer hue, while Honey Bear is definitely brighter. Yeah. And then I got a, so I just got one of those just to use for socks or as color work for something. Then I got um, a sweater quantity of the autumnal wax in the DK base. They use this deep, rich purple plummy color with variegation throughout lighter colors. And there's a little bit of gold in there too. I don't know if you can see it on camera. I don't know if it's coming through. There's a little bit of gold in there as well. Yeah. Um, I do have plans for this. It's to knit a sweater and I can't remember the name of the sweater right now, but I will pop a picture here when I find it. <laughs> yes, that's those are my plans for these. And last but not least, for yarn at least, I'm not done with stash acquisitions yet. Um, so it is the past weekend and this coming weekend is the little, Big Little Texas Yarn Crawl, which is the yarn crawl for Central Texas, which encompasses Austin area and San Antonio area uh, yarn stores. Um, so, but actually this wasn't part of the yarn crawl. Yeah, it wasn't, okay, yeah. I mean, it's the yarn crawl, but I got these before the yarn crawl started. So. Two weekends ago, I met with my local Austin knitting group, um, which Gabriella invited me to two years ago. And we, when we used to meet pre-pandemic, we would go to this coffee shop called Radio Coffee Shop, and it's next door to um, Hill Country Weavers, which is an awesome local yarn store in Austin. They have like the hugest selection of indie dyers I've ever seen. It's probably one of the biggest ones in the U.S., like one of the yarn stores with the biggest selection of indie dyers. Um, and so I got some yarn there because uh, I was still feeling pretty bad about what was going on at work. So afterwards we walked over to do some shopping and I just got more yarn. So one of the things I got is I did not realize they had this, but I found some Teeny Button Studio there. So I've only, I'm only showing you this one skein. I got three skeins. Um, the other two skeins are tucked all the way on the top of my shelf when, from when I reorganized my yarn stash and I just didn't feel like trying to pull them all out. So I just got one out. Um, this is in the Breezy Fingering Base, which is 50% Merino, 50% cotton. And this color was called the Owlery. But yeah, it's just like this pale green blue, sea foamy blue with some orangey rusty speckles. Yeah, and I'm excited to just try another um, cotton base too yeah and bonus it was on sale too because I think um it was near the end of their stock of teeny button and so it was on sale so win 
I also got some Life in the Long Grass. And I got the DK base, and this is a colorway cantaloupe. It's got rainbowy speckles, this pale peachy pink colorway. You've probably seen this before if you watch Aro's um, channel. She got some a couple months ago. Yeah, this, see this one has some more yellowy speckles. There's some purple speckles at the bottom. So I got three skeins of these and these will work perfectly actually because I think I will use these for the test knit that I applied for. I don't know if I got in yet, but uh, for a test knit that's in DK weight yarn. I think this would be perfect. And then um, I originally thought I would do color work. So I got in a skein of aloe, also by Life in the Long Grass. So it's this pretty sea foamy greenish. It's got some little speckles in there. Yeah, um, I wasn't sure about how much I loved them paired together. It's not bad, but I wasn't like 100% sold on it. So I'm okay with breaking them up and just using this for something else because I will always have a use for it. Um, yeah, and I, if you ask me why I decided to do this, because they only had three skeins of cantaloupe left, or else I would have gotten like a whole sweater, sweater quantity of cantaloupe. But they only had three skeins of it left, and I knew for DK weight at least, um, three skeins might not get me that far um, for a sweater, um, but the test is a short sleeve DK weight sweater, so I think three skeins will be just enough for that. Yeah, so that's it for yarn I've gotten. So I've gotten a bunch of knitting notions too. So first, um, Hello Lavender had her No Waste collection drop a couple of weeks ago, and um, I snagged lots of stuff, and I was really happy with it too. So first, I got the Monstera stitch markers. Look how pretty they are. Yeah, and you know, I love plants, and Monstera was actually the first plant that got me into plants. So I was really happy to get these. Then I also, she had some leftovers from the Into the Wild collection, so I got the Lone Wolf ones because these are just gorgeous. And then from the No Waste, I also picked up, I think these were the To the Sea ones, so you can see there's some gold foil on there. Sorry, I'm making, I don't think it's, is it focusing? I think it is. It's a little overcast. It's overcast today, which usually is better lighting for me here. Usually the sun is so strong here that it blows everything out. So usually when it's an overcast day is actually perfect lighting, but I think it's still a little bright, which is why some of the some of these weren't um, quite focusing that well. Anyway, but yeah, I'm super excited to add to my stitch marker marker collection. I got more stitch markers, so. Then I also, Yesenia from Yesenia Studio had an update a week or two ago and I quickly, quickly ran to snag some things. So first I got this set of stitch markers from her. Look how pretty they are. They're like different colored crystals. One's got a moon charm hanging off of it. Yeah, I'm so happy with these. They're so delicate and, and I love that each one is like a little bit different too. And then I also got a necklace. So this is a crystal necklace, this blue color. Um, I would have worn it today, but didn't quite go with a sweater. I'll wear it next time with whatever outfit it is. Yeah, but I'm so excited to wear these. Thank you, Yesenia, and thank you too, because she sent me the cutest little gift. She sent me this little heart stitch marker. Yeah, isn't it so cute? I will think of you every time I use this little heart, Yesenia. So thank you. Um, and then I also got, I actually got some stitch markers from Shopple Mercery too. So these are the overcast stitch markers. They're from Firefly Notes and Shopple Mercery has some of them in her shop. So they come in this little envelope right here. Let me pour it out my hand so you can see. So one of the stitch markers is on a lobster clasp and it's a little umbrella, so cute little silver umbrella, and then there's a couple of these raindrop stitch markers. Yeah, so cute. I love, I love, I love, I love. That's that, and then I also got some buttons because I saw that Shop Limers has some buttons, and I don't know about you, but it is really hard for me to find cute buttons. So most of the time I don't knit things with buttons because I just, the 
the headache of trying to find cute buttons is like too much. I saw these, so I got them. I thought, why not? They're little sparkly buttons. They're a little smaller than I thought they would be. I mean, it's also my own fault. I didn't measure or look at the, I was just like, cute sparkly buttons, bye. Um, but I'm sure I will eventually use them for something. If not, like a little kid sweater. Yeah, but they're so cute. Yeah, okay. So that is everything. I've had a lot of things coming in the mail. I actually have more things coming today, but I thought it might overwhelm the video to have so many things to show you. So I will save them for next time. Um, plus, you know, the USPS is running slower than usual. And so now my mail delivery comes a couple hours later than normal. So they're not even here yet anyway. Um, so, uh, so for our wellness tip this week, uh, my wellness tip for you is to use a pillow um, to help support your body when you're crafting. So I have a real, is it several years? I have one reel on my Instagram. Um, I think it is on YouTube already. It might not be. I'll make sure it's on YouTube. I promise I will upload all the recent ones. Um, but it's on how to use pillows to help you craft comfortably. And so, you know, beyond the typical ones of, you know, putting behind your head, behind your lower back, one of my favorite ways to pillow, use pillows I'm crafting is to actually place it on my lap. I'm gonna try to sit back so you can actually see my lap. Try to place it on my lap so that I can rest my arms on it as I'm knitting, okay? And so, let's see, I'm not quite high enough for you to see, so I will exaggerate, but you can imagine if it's here, then I can rest my arms on it while I'm knitting. And so then it helps your shoulders relax because then you're not holding your shoulders up in the air. It helps your elbows and your wrists relax because they're resting on something. And the nice thing about a pillow is that a pillow is soft so it won't compress any of the nerves or the tendons that run through your wrist, okay? So that's my tip. Use a pillow to help elevate your project. It's especially great if you're working on something heavy, like a large sweater on a heavier weight or a blanket. Just anything where the project itself is getting heavy, resting it on a pillow too will also help take the weight off of your hands so that you're not going to be straining your hands so much to be holding the weight of the project as you're knitting also. So yeah, um, so I encourage you to check out the reel. I will link to it in the description box below once I'm sure that it is on YouTube so you can take a look. Um, thank you again for joining me and thank you so much to those of you who left a comment um, just wishing me well and wishing me a better week ahead. Um, I truly appreciate it. Um, I was actually like moved to tears that week when I posted about it. Um, I also just mentioned on my Instagram stories that I wasn't feeling great and feeling in a great headspace. And there were so many kind comments, so many people telling me that, you know, that it'll be okay, um, telling me how much I've helped them. Um, because I was really in the space of feeling, of like wondering why I had put myself into a profession where I opened myself up to hurt from people. And then, and especially stings when that hurt is coming from someone that I'm helping. Um, and so I was like in this place of feeling really cynical, really jaded, um, and just like really feeling like a lot of despair about humankind. And you all really reminded me so much of why I became a physical therapist. Um, and you also, I think it also reminded me that even if I don't feel appreciated or even if um, I'm not treated well in my quote unquote real job. I still have this space here on Instagram and on YouTube where I can share my knowledge and help others and help those who are here and ready to receive it. Um, so to everyone who has ever sent me a comment or a DM telling me about how much I have helped you or how much my tips have helped you, thank you so much for sharing with me. Um, each one of those really touches my heart really deeply. Um, it really gives me a thrill to know that I am helping you to be healthy and helping you to be pain-free when you craft. Um, it really, you know, brings me so much joy. And I don't say that, you know, lightly. And I don't say that, um, like, I, I truly mean it. I really do. It really, it really does bring me so much joy. Um, so thank you to those of you who have let me into your home and have, um, followed me and followed my journey this past year and have trusted me with your well-being as well. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really grateful for this community here. Um, and I hope you can tell just how sincerely grateful and thankful I am. Um, so yeah, on that sappy note, uh, I will see you guys next time. Happy knitting, everyone.